All right, continuing on to class two. This is a really long class. Got a lot of examples, but I'm not going to do all the examples in class. That's why I'm making new videos. So I can pick and choose which ones are going to be the most effective. That's right. But you could watch the videos anytime you want. You should also read the book. Example 1.7 out of the book. A piston slash cylinder with a cross-sectional area of 0 0.01, this guy, 0 0.01, is connected with a hydraulic line. That's this guy right here. Uh, to another piston cylinder with a cross-sectional area of 0 .00, 0 0.05 uh, square meters. So this one must be this one, and this one must be this one right here. Assume that both chambers in the line are filled with hydraulic fluid and with a density of 900 kilograms per cubic meter. And, and what we, we have already known is that would be 1,000 if it was water. So this is lighter than water less dense than water. Good thing to kind of think of and keep track. And the larger second piston uh, cylinder is six meters higher in elevation. Right here. Boom. Um, the telescope arm, this little guy right here, and the buckets have a hydraulic piss uh, pl moving with them. Moving them. Yes, okay. As seen in this little picture over here. With an outside atmospheric pressure of 100 kil kilopascals, so it's just a little bit below what's standard uh, atmospheric pressure is, and a net force of 25 kilonewtons um, on the smallest piston, so down here. What is the balancing force on the second larger piston? It's really kind of asking what can it lift if this is right here. So we're putting we're putting this as the input and this is going to be the output. Let's see how I did this. Whoops, I didn't do this kind of work. Let's see. It was a previous one. Boom. All right, so we, um, this is, remember, this is a hydraulic actuator right here. This is a mechanical advantage, right, that we're having. Uh, this force right here is going to make a much larger force right here because it cre this force uh, divided by this area is going to create this pressure. It's going to be the same pressure. It's going to drop actually a little because it goes higher, right? So we have to go kind of like a little manometer type of thing going dealy on here and have the pressure up here. But that against this area right here is going to generate a larger force. So we're getting, adding to a little complexity um, for complicated problems and for probably all problems, but for complicated problems for sure. Let's write down some of the things that we know, the givens. As I've mentioned in previous videos, this is an excellent way to try to organize your brain, get yourself ready, and to think, get, get your thinker going as you're writing all these things down and you're collecting your thoughts and you're getting ready to uh, solve the problem, and it's also something to keep you moving. You don't want to have any of that uh, inertia where you're waiting around to the, for, for divine intervention to solve your problem for you. you got to solve it, so you got to keep moving instead of just sitting and staring at a page. That doesn't do a whole lot of good. All right, so one of the things we're going to do is we're just going to make the, make the command decision. Oh, I didn't write the find. F2. That's a big thing. So assume, um, ignore, <laughs> you're going to assume you're ignore? Sure. Assume you ignore atmospheric pressure. Why? Eh, it's not, it's, it's going to be kind of pretty small compared to all. The, the end result is going to be pretty small. So um, what we want to do here is uh, uh, go through and start here and end up here, right? So we want to say, we'll find out that P2 is the thing we're going to get, but we're starting at P1. But here's a case where we're swimming up. And so it's going to be minus, and it's going to be gamma uh, for the hydraulic fluid times H, as they have it put into there. So uh, P1, they said, um, okay, so P1 is going to be the force here divided by this area. So um, I could keep writing out Mm, I didn't do it. No, I guess I could do it. I wrote it over here. Actually, that's what I did. A for F A, F one over A one, and then minus um, density, gravity, height. Right, because we were using a specific weight, but that's going to be density times gravity. So uh, for P one, we take our twenty five thousand. But let's stick in. I mean, we did twenty five kilonewtons. But let's keep it in uh, base units. 
is newtons, uh, divided by the A1, which was 0 0.01 uh, meters squared. And then minus, and the density, did they tell us the density of the fluid? They did, 900, and I started writing units, so let's keep going with that. And 9.81 meters per second squared, and then the distance, where are they giving me the distance? Do, 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 do. Six meters, that's a lot, six meters. Because let's see what, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna get newtons per cubic meter, but then multiply it by meters and we'll get newtons per meter squared, newtons per meter squared. We're gonna be newton meter per meter squared thing. And by the way, here's something that I tell my students in many classes, so I might as well start here and tell you too. A really good habit to do, I found, is to find out what the in-between numbers are. So there's 2,500,000 pascals happening here. But what is this guy? So we can get, find out what the effect of this thing is. How much is it? It's just 52,000, which sounds like a lot, but compared to a million, five, I mean uh, 2.5 million, that's not all that much. So anyway, what we end up finding here is we get 2,447,000 pascals. Let's write this P2 over there, um, which is 2,447 kilopascals. But this is so large that maybe we're smart to uh, go, uh, let's see, 2.447 megawatts. Okay, megapascals if you're dealing with something that large. Use those units. Um, but now we want, really what we wanted to find, remember, don't get distracted too much. We found that the pressure is, let's find out what F2 is gonna be. We can find out F2 is going to be P2, with a pressure of just that there, times A2. Or let's go back to our newtons per meter squared, 2,447,000, and multiply it by our area 2, which is 0 0.05. And what we're left with is 122,350 newtons. And therefore, we can write the answer as 122.4 kilonewtons and box it in. Ba-doom! Mechanical advantage. It's a good thing.